Today, we're diving into an important topic for 3D printing enthusiasts, pressure advance. Specifically, we'll be exploring how to configure and optimize pressure advance in Creality Print 5. If you're looking to improve your print quality by reducing issues like oozing and stringing, this video is for you. So, what exactly is pressure advance? In simple terms, pressure advance is a feature in 3D printer firmware that compensates for the delay between the extruder motion pushing filament and the filament actually exiting the nozzle. This helps to ensure consistent extrusion, especially during rapid changes in print speed. I'm going to demonstrate two methods for dialing in your pressure advance that are available in Creality Print 5. Then we'll update our material profile to include this setting for future prints. This video is sponsored by our friends at PCBWay. If you're looking for parts beyond the capabilities of your printer, visit PCBWay's 3D printing portal. Just upload your file and choose from their large collection of filaments and take your project from prototype to production. From PCBs to CNC machining to 3D printing, look to PCBWay.com for unmatched precision. Visit them today at PCBWay.com and bring your ideas to reality. Without pressure advance, you might notice issues like oozing and stringing, especially in high speed prints but with the right settings, you can significantly reduce these problems. Pressure advance works by adjusting the extruder's pressure in real time. When the printer slows down for fine details or to make a sharp corner, the extruder retracts a bit to reduce pressure. And when it speeds up, it pushes more filament to maintain the consistent flow. Pressure advance is for printers running clipper firmware like the K1 series of printers, uh, the Ender 3 V3, uh, the V3KE. Now, if you're running an Ender 3 V3 SE, you're running Marlin firmware and pressure advance isn't for you. For the SE, you'll want to look into linear advance. It's the same concept, just a different way of getting there. Now, let's go ahead and get into setting up pressure advance. I'm going to jump into Creality Print 5 and set up the first of two methods to dial in our pressure advance. I'm Bill and this is Pushing Plastic. Okay, so the first method we are going to use is what they call the pressure advance line method. And what you want to do before you get started on either one of the two, make sure you're set on the printer that you want to work with. I am working on my K1 Max. I do have the textured uh, plate on and most important, well, equally important you want to make sure you're on the proper material now i am working on my freemover.net pla um if this isn't the one that you wanted you just click it over here and you select it from the list but i am using my free mover i want to check this out real quick and see you'll notice that the pressure advance is not enabled let's go ahead and set up the test I'm going to come up here to the Creality logo in the upper left hand corner. We'll click there and we're going to Calibration and we're going to click on Pressure Advance. We have two extruder types, the DDE or Direct Drive Extruder and the Bowden Tube. I will be using the Direct Drive Extruder. There's two methods, the Pressure Advance Tower and the Pressure Advance Line. I will be doing the Pressure Advance Line first. Now, I like this one. It's the easiest of the two. It is not necessarily the most accurate. It does depend on a good first layer. So if you're not getting first good layers, you might either want to fix that or you want to go right to the tower method. So we're going to demonstrate both, but the first one is uh, the line method. We're going to come down to these settings. The first one is the start pressure advance. I will be starting at a pressure advance of zero. I'm going to end my pressure advance at 0.1 and for each increment it's going to be a pressure advance step of 0 0.002. So we'll be starting at 0 and then we'll be going to 0 0.002, 0 0.004, 0 0.006 and so on until we reach 0 0.1. 
let's go ahead and click OK. And you'll notice that it kicks us right to the preview mode. That's not a bad thing. And what we have is a series of lines running from the bottom of the plate towards the back, and you'll see the numbers. And this here, it, the numbers indicate the step value. Like we're starting at zero. The next number you see is 004. Between those two numbers, you'll see another line. That would be the 002 mark. So each one of these lines represents one step. And what we're going to be looking for when we print this is which line looks the best and what value it corresponds to. Let's go ahead and print this and take a look at how it comes out. Okay, so we have our printed results here. And quick look, you'll notice some blobs on there and you'll notice some uh, thin lines. Let's get into what's going on here. Coming from the left to the right, what we have is our printer is accelerating as it moves from the left to the right. And that's where we see this little bit of dead space as it accelerates or it's getting ready to accelerate. There's not enough filament in there yet to, to fill the line to the normal width. And then it is accelerating. And when we get to the second set of blobs, that's where it's decelerating. And what you can see is there's too much pressure in there, so the filament just oozes out. And as we move upward, you'll notice it gets better in some cases, worse in others, depending what you're looking at. So what we're looking for is which one of these many lines here is the most consistent. So the ones with the big blobs that stand out here, you can eliminate them right away. So now I'm up in the range of 0 0.036. And I can still see some blobs going on. Um, 0 0.038 doesn't look too bad. That might be the one I go with. Let's go a little bit higher. 0.4. That's equally good. I get to 42, I see. It gets a little thin, but not too bad. 44 doesn't look too bad. Um, when I get to 48, what I'm noticing is where it accelerates, I'm getting some blobs. And it's getting a little thin over here where it decelerates. So I think the number for me is going to be 0 0.036. Well, let's jump back into Creality Print and I'll show you how to enter that into your profile. Okay, so we're back into Creality Print and we're going to enter those results. So we're going to come up to our PLA up here on the upper right hand corner. We're going to click on that. We're going to hit edit the little pencil icon all the way to the right. Click on that. Make sure your advanced settings are on. And we're going to enable pressure advance. And right below that, we got a new setting for pressure advance, of course. And the default is 0 0.02. We want 0 0.036. And what we would do is go ahead and, and save this. Now, I have one more method I want to demonstrate, so I am not going to save this. I want to make sure to put those back the way they were. Okay. What we want to do now is go back to Prepare. And we're going to go to File. And I'm going to hit New Project. This clears out any test settings we had going for ourselves. So now we're going to set up for the second method, which is the tower method. And just like before, we're going to click on the Creality logo. We're going to go to Calibration and back to Pressure Advance again. I'm working with the Direct Drive Extruder. And this time I'm doing the PA Tower, Pressure Advance Tower. The settings, don't even have to touch them, same as before. Uh, we're starting with zero. We're going to end with a pressure advance of 0.1 and we're going to step up by 0.002 just like before but this time we're going to go vertically i'm going to click ok and like before it kicks us right into the preview mode and you'll notice we have 
this odd shaped tower. Now this one is more accurate than the line method, but it's also harder to read. Uh, a lot of people will print this out and they'll say, I can't tell the difference. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do this and hopefully we get enough information where we see a difference. And we'll see what it looks like on the other side. Okay, so I have our, the results of our tower print. And what you're probably going to first notice is at the top where it's all torn up. Uh, that's a lot of... Too much pressure advance. What we're looking at is measuring from the bottom up. So when I'm looking at the bottom in each corner, what I'm seeing is a lot of bulging down at the bottom and then it tapers inward. And you can see the, the taper here when I lay the red lines on it. Um, I'm looking at that area. And what I'm gonna do is measure where the taper stops. Now, Unfortunately, when I do that, you can't see the taper as much because the ruler's in the way of the light. But it's looking right about 18 to me. So from here, we're going to do a little bit of simple math. And the formula is going to be our pressure advance starting plus our pressure advance step multiplied by what we measured. So in our case, our pressure advance step was 0 0.002. We measured 18, so it's 18 times 0 0.002, which gives us 0 0.036. And we're going to add what our pressure advance starting value was, in this case, 0. So we add 0 to 0.036, and we get 0 0.036. Let's jump back into Creality Print, and we'll update our profile. Okay, so now that we have our results, we want to come up here to the upper right hand corner. We're going to click on the PLA. I'm still on my free mover, which is good. We want to be there. We're going to click the pencil once again for edit. And now we're going to make sure our advanced settings are turned on and we're going to enable pressure advance. And I'm going to update 0 0.02 to 0 0.036. I'm going to save. And it's just giving me a warning that I'm overwriting an existing profile, which is perfectly good by me. Click OK. And we can go ahead and close that out. Our pressure advance is now set. Anytime I use the free mover PLA, I'm going to have a pressure advance of 0 0.036. It wasn't that difficult, and it didn't take a whole lot of time. It's best to take the time to dial in your settings than it is to get bad results after a long print. Now, here are a few tips to keep in mind. Different filaments will require different pressure advance settings. Always calibrate when switching materials and brands. Higher speeds might need higher pressure advance values. Adjust accordingly. Extrusion temperature can affect filament flow. Make sure your print temperature is consistent. And there you have it. By properly configuring pressure advance in Creality Print 5, you can achieve cleaner, more precise prints. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button and let me know down in the comments. Smash that bell so you'll be alerted to new content in the future. Live your life one layer at a time. And if you haven't done it yet, please consider subscribing.